So a uh, cardiovascular system consists of heart and vessels. Yes, vessels, they can be different. Arteries, uh, which carry blood from the heart, veins, which carry blood to the heart, and capillaries, which are located between <clears throat> arteries and veins, like microcirculatory stream. And the heart, in Latin it is core, in Greek cardio, it is a hollow muscular organ, of cardiovascular system, it pumps the blood to the arteries and receives blood from the veins. <clears throat> so not always arteries contain arterial blood and not always uh, veins contain venous blood, yes, deoxygenated. You know there are mainly two circulations, actually they are three, but mainly there are two circulations, systemic and pulmonary. So in systemic Arteries contain arterial blood, uh, veins contain venous blood. In pulmonary, it's vice versa. Pulmonary transit is artery, it contains deoxygenated blood, yes. And uh, pulmonary veins contain oxygenated blood. Okay, so we will start. Ah, it is not the only function of the heart. Heart also acts as a reservoir for the blood. And also it performs endocrine function. It produces um, natrium uretic peptide that regulates excretion of natrium with urine. So some way it's written that it, uh, this peptide is produced in the auricles, some way that it is produced in the atria. I'm still not sure where exactly it is produced, but somewhere in the heart. So these are the main functions. Topography, so this is the heart. Uh, first, skeletotopy. When we describe skeletotopy of the heart, we describe it in relation to the ribs. So uh, this upper part of the heart, white part, is named base, and base is located at the level of the third costal cartilage, and this lower part is named apex. It is located in the fifth intercostal space, uh, 1.5 centimeters medially from the left midclavicular line. Medially from the, yes, left midclavicular line. Ma'am, uh -huh. base will be uh, included at the arch or the auricles or the ventricle, uh, <coughs> superior to the auricles. So you feel it? No, this is formed by atria and large vessels, yes. Mm -hmm. And auricles belong to atria. Where the branches of the aorta will be descent, it will be counted as the apex portion. No, arch of the aorta is not the heart. Mm -hmm. It's only this part is base. Okay. okay, so holotopy, it is located in the mediastino, we have already said, yes. And according to clinical division, it is located in the anterior mediastino. And according to anatomical, it is located in the middle mediastino. And certainly we have to know syntopy of the heart. Uh, laterally from it, uh, there are lungs. Uh, below it, there is diaphragm and then liver. And above it, there are large vessels. And behind it, there are organs of posterior mediastinum, uh, esophagus, and also thoracic aorta is located behind it. So that's it. Okay, so now anatomic position of the heart. So for me, it is like that. If we talk about the patient who is supine, yes, so that it, then it will be like that. His head is here. So how to identify anatomic position of the heart? Mm, heart has, um, in different books it's written, two or four surfaces. So this anterior surface is named sternocostal surface because it faces sternum and cartilaginous parts of the ribs. Posterior surface is diaphragmatic surface that faces the diaphragm. In some way, and some way it's written that these are pulmonary borders. Some way it's written that these are pulmonary surfaces because they face the lungs. So sternocostal surface is convex and diaphragmatic surface is flattened. In some of our preparations, it's not that much easy to identify which one is convex, which one is flattened, because they were compressed by another preparations for a long time, yes? And uh, that's why we should use some other also um, features to identify uh, anatomic position of the heart. So we also should look at the large vessels. Mm. At the base of the heart, there are two large vessels, aorta and pulmonary trunk. Thickness of the wall of aorta is always larger than uh, thickness of the wall of pulmonary trunk. And this pulmonary trunk that arises from right ventricle, it should be located in front of the aorta and to the left. So this is pulmonary trunk, this is aorta, this is anatomic position. Uh, what can we see here? This is pulmonary trunk, this is aorta, yes? Here also we can see pulmonary trunk and aorta. This is aorta. Uh, we also can look at the auricles. Auricles are additional cavities of the atria and they are located from the sides of the large vessels. So they surround these large vessels 
and they are directed anteriorly and to the left. So that's why this is an atomic position. This is an atomic position. This is also okay. Uh, we also have to know that um, heart is not oriented strictly vertically. Yes, mm -hmm. apex of the heart is directed downward, forward, and to the left, and base of the heart is directed upward, uh, backward, and to the right. Uh, largest part of the heart is located in the left part of left half of the thoracic cavity. Smaller part is located in the right half. Mm -hmm. That's why, yes, we have already talked about it, that left lung is smaller than the right one. Yes, mm -hmm. it has only two lobes and it has cardiac notch for the apex of the heart, in caesura cardiaca. Okay. <coughs> So that was about anatomic position. What can we see in the external structure? So first of all, you know that uh, heart consists of four chambers. Yes, two atria and two ventricles. Uh, from outside in the internal external structure, atria are separated from the ventricles by means of coronary groove or coronary sulca, sulcus coronarius. Here it is. It is clearly visible on the posterior surface, but on the anterior surface, this groove is covered by large vessels, so only some part of it is visible. Uh, ventricles are separated from each other by anterior and posterior interventricular grooves. Uh, on the anterior surface, we can see anterior interventricular groove, sulcus interventricularis anterior, that's it, and posteriorly, we can see posterior interventricular groove, sulcus interventricularis posterior. In all of these grooves, uh, vessels which um, carry oxygenated blood to the heart and collect venous blood from the heart pass. Uh, and if we look attentively, we will see that largest part of the sternocostal surface is formed by the right ventricle, whereas largest part of the um, diaphragmatic surface is formed by the left ventricle. Yes? Mm -hmm. What else? Mm, uh, from external surface, yes, we also can see auricles, I have already told you. Mm, that's it. Uh, it. This is apex, and in the apex, there is like notch of apex. Mm, in caesura apices cordis. It is a place where vessels which supply the blood, uh, supply the heart with oxygenated blood, they form anastomosis. We'll talk about it later. Okay, it was about external structure, okay, nothing else. So if we compare two pulmonary borders, uh, right and left, certainly uh, left border will be more obtuse and right border will be more acute, like, will be sharper, because wall of the right ventricle is thinner, yes, than the left ventricle, because load onto the right ventricle is much less than load uh, on the left ventricle. Okay, so now about internal structure. There are four chambers, uh, right, left, right, sorry, uh, right atrium, right ventricle, here we can see, left atrium and left ventricle. So uh, we'll start with systemic circulation. Systemic circulation serves for supply of, of the whole body with oxygenated blood and with nutrients. And so systemic circulation, you know it, starts with left ventricle, from the left ventricle, with aorta, this is aorta, yes, and it ends in the right atrium with superior and inferior <coughs> vena cava. This is superior vena cava, this is here there was somewhere before this one, yes, opening for inferior vena cava. So let's start with um, systemic circulation. Yes, I know. With the left ventricle. So left ventricle, yes, if we compare walls, once again I'm telling you, of the right ventricle, you see they are very thin, and walls of the left ventricle, they are much thicker, mm -hmm. because they uh, have to create much higher pressure to push the blood to all the organs and tissues, yes? <clears throat> so that's it. Uh, left ventricle has two openings. One of them communicates left ventricle with left atrium, and it is known as left atrioventricular orifice. Um, Triasphid? No, here it's mitral. Um, foramen atrioventricularis sinistrum. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's left one. Yes, and it is closed by mitral valve. Mitral valve. Mitral valve. Mitral, let's be mitral. I think mitral I checked. Okay. So um, this, uh, or bicuspid, another name, yes, it is bicuspid valve. Because it has two cusps, anterior cusp, this one, here we can see it, and posterior cusp, this one. Um, 
Uh, this both of these cusps uh, by means of tendinous cords. These are tendinous cords, corda tendinea. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are connected with papillary muscles, musculi papillaris, which are located in the left ventricle. So how do uh, how does this valve work? During contraction of the ventricle uh, of the atrium, uh, valve is opened, and blood can freely enter left ventricle from the left atrium uh, to the left ventricle but during contraction of the ventricles blood pushes these cusps uh, of uh, mitral valve upward and these cusps they join together and they um, firmly close yes uh, left atrioventricular orifice to prevent regurgitation yes to prevent entrance backflow. like backflow yeah. backflow of the blood to the left atrium, yes. And uh, du um, during uh, contraction of the left ventricle, blood oxygenated should enter the aorta uh, to start systemic circulation. So um, due to the um, presence of the tendinous cords, cusps of mitral valve, they cannot protrude too much, uh, protrude above, yes, they should stop at the horizontal level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens in case of the pathology, they protrude, like they elevate, and then there is no complete um, closure of this uh, opening, yes? And uh, in such condition is named as prolapse. But it is pathology, we don't study it in novel anatomy. Due to systolic pressure, it just closes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, because, yes, during systole contraction of the left ventricle, yes, this blood pushes cusps upward and they join together. And they uh, prevent backflow of the blood. Yes. So this is mitral valve. Uh, between left ventricle and aorta, there is another valve that is named aortic valve. You will have to look at it here. So aortic valve, here we can see it. Aortic valve uh, consists of three cusps, but if here they are flat in mitral valve and in the tricuspid valve, cusps are flat, here uh, they are semi-lunar, semi-lunar cusps. Here we can see them, yes? And they form like lunules or sinuses between cusps and wall of the aorta. Here we can see. Uh, wall, um, pulmonary valve also has three cusps, uh, but names for uh, cusps of the aorta, um, for uh, cusps of the aortic valve, they are right, left, and posterior, and for the pulmonary valve, uh, right, left, and anterior. So here, cusps are right, left, and posterior. Here we can see them. Uh, in, in the center of the um, free margin of each cusp, there is thickening that is named nodule. So this nodules of, of what here now we can see very well. What nodules they join each other when cu um, cusps uh, get connected, and this presence of these nodules makes closure of the valve very firm. Yes. Nodule will mm -hmm. be present on the posterior side. Everywhere in each nodules will be present in the middle of free margin of the cusp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. So aortic valve uh, performs two functions. One of the functions is to prevent backflow of the oxygenated blood from aorta back to the left ventricle during diastole or relaxation of the heart. Yes, it is one of the functions. But also aortic valve performs another function. Here in the sinus between cusp and wall of the uh, aorta, uh, in right and left, in right uh, and left cusps, there is opening of coronary arteries. Coronary arteries. Coronary arteries. Here we can see it very well. Yes. So coronary arteries uh, carry oxygenated blood to the heart. So they provide blood supply of the heart. And during systole of left ventricle, uh, these cusps they close this opening and they do not allow blood 
and coronary arteries. But during uh, diastole, when blood tries to go back, it fills in the sinuses, and that's why nodules join together, so valve gets closed. Mm. Blood can easily enter coronary arteries, so aortic valve provides blood supply of the heart during diastole, because uh, when it gets closed, it opens the way for arterial blood into the coronary arteries. Is it clear what I am saying? Can I explain again? Can I please yes, go? Stop. Mm -hmm. During the diastole? What look? This is the aortic, yes? These are cusps, and, uh -huh. and here, in the right and in the left, there are openings for coronary arteries, which carry oxygenated blood to the heart, yes? So during uh, systole, blood goes upward to the aorta, and it pushes cusps to the walls of the aorta, yes? And uh, these cusps, they close. Um, opening of coronary artery, so blood cannot enter. But during um, diastole, due to the gravity, blood tries to go back to the ventricles, but it fills in these cusps, yes, and here they get closed, so blood cannot enter, but it can easily enter these coronary arteries. Yes, ma'am. No. So that's why blood supply of the heart occurs during the diastole aortic valve is at the, up to the horizontal level or to the equatorial only? No, not horizontal level completely, but somehow nearly close to horizontal level, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So aortic valve has two functions, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, two communications, yes, I told you. Of the left ventricle. If we look at the surface of the right uh, left ventricle, uh, first of all, um, cavity is cone shaped, yes, and here uh, surface is not smooth. Here we can see trabecular carnea and also papillary muscles. In the left ventricle, there are two papillary muscles, but tendinous cords of one cusp they are attached to both papillary muscles. So not only to one papillary muscle, but to both papillary muscles. Uh, it's the same for one cusp and for the other cusp. These papillary muscles help in closure of this valve, right? Yes. They help in attachment of the cordia tendine. Yes. Why is it like that? Okay. It helps in attachment of the cordia tendine. Mm. He yes. said it, yes? In Hindi, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so now internal structure. Uh, it is hollow organ, so we should describe the walls, yes? Uh, it has, like in uterus, each layer of the um, wall of the heart has a special name. So internally, it is endocardium, endocardium uh, that is um, lined, it is connective tissue layer that is lined with squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium. And for example, these cusps of the valve, they are only formed by double layer of endocardium. There is nothing else but double layer of endocardium. Then under the endocardium, there is muscular layer that is named myocardium. And in the myocardium of ventricles, there are three layers. There is internal longitudinal, and this internal longitudinal layer of myocardium forms trabecular carnea and also papillary muscles. And then the middle layer is circular, and outer layer is oblique. Oblique, yes. So internal and external layers of myocardium are common for both ventricles. Circular layer is individual for right and left ventricle. And that's why. Uh, thickening of circular layer of myocardium of the left ventricle provides that. So the thickening, it provides increasing of the thickness of the uh, wall of the left ventricle. And so from outside of the serous membrane, that is named pericardium. Ah, in the myocardium of atria, there are only two layers. Internal one is again longitudinal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so internal layer is uh, again longitudinal, here we can see it, and external one is circular. Okay. 
That's it. Uh, so, and then, yes, I told you, systemic circulation ends with superior and inferior vena cava in the right atrium. So this is right. Но я же вам сказал, вам надо отработку ее забрать. После отработки. So right atrium. Okay. Atrium dextrum. Uh, uh, it has four communications in adult people, and in fetuses uh, there are five communications. So first, um, this is, yes, surface of the right atrium is not smooth. Here we can see pectinal muscles. Here we can see them. Yes. Uh, they are located nearly in the whole right atrium and also in the auricle. Which I don't see. Да. Mm -hmm. What here we can see. What also pectinal muscle and here it was auricle. Uh, auricle is like an additional cavity for right and left atrium. So I told you, according to some sources, it produces this natrium uretic peptide. Uh, yes, this is, yes, this is auricle. Yes, this is auricle. And um, also, it is like an additional cavity, and it creates a laminary blood flow, uh, turbulent blood flow, yes, inside it, because it's like a dead end. And that's why formation of clots is very common in uh, these auricles. So, yes, thrombosis of the auricles is also very common. So, uh, yes, one uh, opening it is superior vena cava, another opening is opening of the inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava collects venous blood from uh, head and neck and upper limbs, and inferior vena cava from lower limbs, pelvis, and abdomen. We'll study it later. The other communication is a communication between right atrium and right ventricle. Uh, it is right atrioventricular orifice, foramen atrioventricular dextrum, and it is closed by tricuspid. Valve, yes. So structure of tricuspid valve is yes, cusps. The same as structure of mitral valve. Yeah. valve is the same like mitral, but yes, it has three cusps. So one cusp is anterior again, the other cusp is posterior, and one more cusp, it is septal cusp. Yes, because it is septal, because it faces interventricular septum. Interventricular septum is here, it is like a, um, it is located between two ventricles. That's why it is interventricular septum. So again, each of the cusps is attached by means of tendinous cords. Да. It uh, blood enters this um, or when blood enters auricles, mm -hmm. blood flow becomes turbulent, not laminary. Yes, because like turbulent, high blood flow. So there will be chances of a clot. Yes. How it will be? Because it is turbulent. It's you have to study it in Very physics. Difficult. If if law is laminary, then there are less uh, less chances that a clot will be formed. Mm -hmm. But if it is turbulent, then um, there is chances. Yes, there are chances. You, you have to study it in physics. Ask your physics teacher; he will explain. Professor Sergei Chuchukle. Da. Yes. Sergei Chuchkalov. Okay, what else did I have to tell you? So, yes, the same structure. So, there are tendinous cords. Yes, and by means of tendinous cords, cusps are attached to the papillary muscles. So, everything is uh, the same here. One more communication of the right atrium, it is coronary sinus. Sinus coronarius. A coronary sinus is located here. Uh, at the coronary sulcus here, coronary groove. So coronary sinus collects venous blood from all the veins which um, arise from the heart. So the whole venous, nearly the whole venous blood from the heart. And it also enters right atrium. So four communications are present in adult people. During embryogenesis in fetal period, there is one more additional communication. That is known uh, uh, oval foramen, foramen ovale. It is located in the interatrial septum here. And now we cannot see communication, but we can see just fossa ovalis. Because by the moment of birth, it should be closed. It should be overgrown with connective tissue. But during embryogenesis, because pulmonary circulation doesn't work, yes, blood, which comes 
to the right atrium, most part of the blood, we'll talk about it later, through foramen ovale, it enters left atrium. So, um, yes, foramen ovale is the fifth communication that is present only during fetal period. Mm -hmm. So, surface is not smooth. Yes, you can see there are the spectinal muscles. Mm -hmm. And about internal structure, I also have told you there is endocardium again, myocardium that consists of only two layers, mm -hmm. internal longitudinal and outer vena circular, and pericardium, serous membrane, pericardium from outside. Right ventricle, here it is, also has two communications, ventriculum uh, dextrum, right ventricle. So it has two communications. One of them is uh, foramen atrioventriculari dextrum, right atrioventricular orifice, and the other one is opening of... <coughs> Yes, pulmonary trunk. So about this valve we have already talked. Pulmonary trunk uh, is closed by pulmonary valve. Pulmonary valve, it is here. Mm -hmm. And structure of pulmonary valve is nearly the same like aortic valve. So it also consists of semi-lunar cusps. They are also three in number. Yes, they are also three in number. But uh, if in aorta, I told you, they are anterior, posterior, uh, right, left, and posterior, here they are right, left, and anterior. Yes, it must be faces anterior. Yes. So here we can see the same, also semi lunar cusps, one, two, and three. This, this is the third one. But there are no coronary arteries here. That's why the only function of pulmonary valve is to prevent backflow of the blood uh, during diastole from the pulmonary trunk back to the right ventricle. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so here, in the, if we talk about surface of the right ventricle, it's also not smooth. It also has trabecular carnia, and it has papillary muscles. And in the right ventricle, there are three papillary muscles because there are three cusps in tricuspid valve, yes? And again, um, corda tendinae of one cusp are attached to papillary muscles, to um, adjacent papillary muscles, not only to single one, but to adjacent papillary muscles. Mm -hmm. And internal structure is the same. Again, there is endocardium, myocardium that consists of three layers. Yes, and then pericardium, outermost layer. Mm -hmm. Yes, right and left ventricles are separated from each other by means of interventricular septum, septum interventricularis. And this septum mm, consists of two parts. Upper one third, it is membranous part, it is formed mainly by connective tissue, it is thinner. And lower two thirds, they are muscular part, they are formed by muscles. So uh, it is thicker, interventricular septum. What else? Uh, myocardium of the heart uh, consists of typical cardiomyocytes, and it is formed by cardiac striated muscular tissue. What is the difference between cardiac striated uh, muscular tissue and just um, just striated? striated. Yes. yes. What is the difference? Striated mm -hmm. is uh, striated is voluntary, mm -hmm. and cardi cardiac striated is involuntary. Yes. So yes, it is involuntary. In microscope, it looks like striated. Yes, but it is involuntary. We cannot regulate contraction of our heart. And these typical cardiomyocytes, they are just able to contract in response to any external stimulus. But here in the heart, also there is conducting system of the heart that consists of atypical cardiomyocytes. So they are also muscular cells, but they are also able to generate the stimulus, to generate... Yes, action potential, to generate action potential. And so this conduct, and from them, this stimulus can be distributed to typical cardiomyocytes. So conducting system of the heart consists of several structures. Uh, first, it is atrio, sinoatrial node, sinoatrial node, that is considered to be primary pacemaker. So in normal cases, this sinoatrial node um, regulates regulates our heartbeat. It, it is named sinoatrial because here in the right atrium, between opening of superior and inferior vena cava, there is sinus of caval veins, and here there is the sinoatrial node. And 
uh, cardiomyocytes of sinatrial node, they can generate action potential with a frequency 60 to 90 beats per minute. So it's normal uh, pulse, yes, normal heartbeat of the um, human. And the other secondary pacemaker is atrioventricular node. Um, it is located between atrium and ventricles in the upper part of interventricular sept, and it can generate action potential with a frequency 40 to 60 beats per minute. So if something happens with sinatrial node, then this pacemaker begins to produce stimuli. Then the next, there are bundles of his. They are two, uh, right and left, like separate for right and left ventricles. And these bundles of his, they produce, generate action potential with a frequency 20 to 40 beats per minute. And the last, these are Purkinje fibers. They are located in the apex of the heart and they can generate impulses with a speed with a frequency 10 to 20 beats per minute. So certainly it is impossible to live with such a heartbeat, yes, uh, such um, pulse is um, insufficient to provide uh, our whole body with um, blood, yes, and that's why in case of any failure of sinatrial node, usually electronic pacemaker is installed, so we are um, under the skin, yes. Now these pacemakers mm -hmm. are uh, placed, uh, are present on the which layer, like myocardium? Myocardium. Or is, they are also cardiomyocytes. Okay. Uh -huh. Is there any chances of a clot then? Clot? Clot between them? Mm. No, uh, there is no chance of... I don't know about this. It, it, can, be. it can be necrosis. If there is a necrosis in case of myocardial infarction, then it will stop working, of course. The coronary uh, venous fluid are supplied mm -hmm. to the myocardial cells, okay? Oh, yes. They may be contain the fat substance. And there may be chances of a uh, cortical... Clotting. Clotting is due to thrombosis and thrombosis mm -hmm. does not act in myocardium. Clotting is, mm -hmm. uh, takes place inside the vessels, yes? Mm -hmm. It blocks blood flow. Okay. And if there is no blood flow, there is no blood supply, then it will cause necrosis. Mm -hmm. So it's just the cells will die and they will not produce action potentials. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more thing that you have to know is a blood supply and venous drainage from the heart. I have already told you that blood supply of the heart is uh, provided by two coronary arteries. These coronary arteries originate from the ascending part of aorta, and at the very beginning of the ascending part of aorta, there is a pulp of aorta, like a dilation, and from here, this right and left coronary arteries start. So right coronary artery uh, arises and goes to the right, left coronary artery goes to the left. So right coronary artery goes to the right, surrounds right pulmonary margin, uh, goes, um, lies in the coronary sulcus on the posterior surface, and it gives one branch, that, mainly one, there are more, but we have to know at least one, it is posterior interventricular artery, arteria interventricularis posterior. Left coronary artery arises uh, and goes to the left, and very soon after its origin, it gives anterior interventricular artery that lies in the anterior interventricular sulcus. And the second branch is circumflex branch of the left coronary artery that continues uh, to the left and surrounds uh, left pulmonary border and lies in the coronary sulcus. So right and left coronary arteries join together on, on the posterior surface and the coronary sulcus and form anastomosis. So what is anastomosis? It is connection of two hollow organs. Now we are talking about vascular anastomosis. It is connection of two vessels, yes, um, to provide constant blood flow, yes. If there is a clot in one of the vessels, then from the other vessel, blood will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, posterior interventricular artery, that is a branch of right coronary artery, goes downward in the posterior interventricular groove and reaches apex of the heart, where it meets anterior interventricular artery, that is a branch of the left coronary artery. And here at the apex of the heart, they also form anastomosis with each other. So heart is vital organ, yes? And uh, no, we cannot live without the heart, yes? And that's why heart is surrounded by two rings of anastomosis. One is transverse, that is between right coronary artery and circumflex branch of left coronary artery, and another one is vertical, that is between anterior and posterior interventricular arteries. That's it. Mm -hmm. This is blood supply. Venous drainage. Um, 
goes, I told you, mainly into the coronary sinus, and here into the coronary sinus, five veins drain, mm -hmm. large veins. So first it is great cardiac vein, vena cardiaca magna. It starts from the apex of the heart, and it lies in the anterior interventricular groove, goes upward, then turns to the left, and uh, surrounds left pulmonary margin, and reaches coronary sinus. The other is the middle cardiac vein, vena cardiaca media, that also starts in the apex of the heart, lies in the posterior interventricular sulcus, and drain into the coronary sinus. Smaller cardiac vein, vena cardiaca uh, parva, it originates from the right pulmonary margin of the heart, moves upward, and also drains into the coronary sinus. And two more veins, they are oblique vein of the left atrium and posterior vein of the left ventricle. So they start from left atrium and left ventricle correspondingly, and they also drain into coronary sinus. Uh, and coronary sinus drains into right, right atrium, we said it, yes? There are also the smallest cardiac veins, vena cardiaca minima, they are numerous. They uh, collect venous blood from everywhere in the heart, and they drain separately into the right atrium. This is venous drainage from the heart. One more thing that you have to study for the next lesson is pericardium. So pericardium, we have said about it before, yes? Mm. Uh, is a serous membrane that covers the heart. Like peritoneum, like pleura, yes, it has two layers. There is visceral pericardium uh, that is named epicardium. Yes, it's a... No, epicardium. Endocardium is from the side. So visceral pericardium then lights the heart, yes, itself. And there is parietal layer, pericardium, uh, that... Um, is from outside. Between visceral and parietal layers of pericardium, there is again a serous fluid, yes, that prevents friction, that allows heart to move. Uh, pericardium covers not only heart, but also continues to the large vessels, mm. the beginning of large vessels. Mm -hmm.